Sub Podcast, episode 77. I am one of your hosts, Chris Cheney. Next to me, my guy, excited about football, does not want to be here right now. I definitely don't want to be here right now. He want, he want, dude, fix your lineups. I'm trying to right now. If you stop sounding like a robot, man. Chris <laughs> sounds like a fu- Episode 77. Epi- nah, bro. You sound like a fucking <laughs> robot, bro. Loosen up, baby. Day one of the NFL, first Sunday of the season. Oh, we, we had a shitty week one game on Thursday night, Green Bay. In Chicago, and I'm excited. I'm other host Lawrence Deloach. Hell yeah, that's my guy right here. My fucking guy. He's all fired up. I'm all not because it's early for me. It's early for yo. I hit up Chris at like yo. This is we recording Sunday morning, right? I hit up Chris like nine something in the morning. Like yo, bro, you ready? He's like, dude, I'm fucking in bed. <laughs> I was like, do you need another hour? And in my mind, I was like, if this motherfucker does not wake the fuck up <laughs> right now, I'm going to flip out because it is football Sunday. There, it is less than ninety minutes to kick off, and we're recording. In this podcast, and with that being said, let's talk about the probably the biggest news uh, for the week, uh, Mr. Antonio Brown. That's my guy now. That's it, that's Chris's guy now. That's, he's a he's a patriot. He's a patriot. Uh, you know, I've always liked him. <laughs> this is what every patriot fan's gonna say. I know. You know, I always liked him. I always liked him. <laughs> I was like AB booming. I always liked him. He was now now he's with he's fucking going for the hell. Tom Brady with ring number seven, man, and. Um, it's very interesting, man. The timeline, man. It's, it's deeper than to me. It's deeper than just football, bro. It's you know, it's uh. There's a couple things going on because of the helmet thing. The helmet thing made it really spicy. It wasn't no, what, dude. The helmet thing is, is pales in comparison to what happened uh, this week that passed with Antonio Brown. Well, all right, you break break the whole thing down. I you, mean, I, you have more info than I do. I mean, basically, I mean, the, the dude he he gets traded from Pittsburgh to Oakland. Uh huh. And um, and everyone's like, wow, this is going to be different for him, obviously. He's played his whole entire career with Ben Roethlisberger in Pittsburgh. But then he just started having certain breakdowns. Like Ben Roethlisberger did an interview, and, you know, he basically, you know, said, you know, nothing, he had a lot of praise for A.B. And A.B. basically was like, yo, man, we ain't friends. I don't fuck with you. Like, that was like one thing. I was like, yeah. wow, that was kind of crazy. <laughs> then, he gets, funny then he gets to training camp and then and with the Raiders, and then everything just starts unraveling from the helmet thing to uh, his his feet. Uh, being frozen. I don't know if you, you, you no, saw that. No, I missed this. What happened with the feet? So he, he, he did a therapy, uh, cryotherapy or some shit like that for okay. his feet. Yeah. And then he shows pictures on social media of his feet just being disgustingly frozen, right? Uh-huh. And everyone's like, yo, like he was threatening like he couldn't play because of his feet. He was like he needed to sit out for a little while. And this is training camp. Now. I didn't know this. You didn't, yeah, it's, it gets even worse. So now Oakland. They're on HBO's Hard Knocks, which basically Hard Knocks, they take a look into the training camp of a team uh, during the preseason before the, the season starts. So HBO's doing Hard Knocks. You know, the helmet thing is is fine. They rap on uh, Hard Knocks, and then this is when shit, the, the season's about to start in like five days, and then A.B. just really goes off the rails. <laughs> I mean, he called his, his general manager a cracker. <laughs> And, Hell yeah, uh, dude! And he he thre- allegedly he threatened to um to punch him in the face. That's when everyone was like, "Okay, th- this is gonna be bad." He uh <laughs> then like on Thursday, the Raiders pretty much you know they say, "Hey, he's not playing. We're gonna have to suspend him." And then he goes into this. The next day, he goes into this public apology to the team, uh-huh. and the Raiders are like, "All right, fine. You know, you know, we you're so talented. We're gonna we're gonna you're gonna play on Monday night against the Denver Broncos." Then he goes on social media and releases a video of like a hidden it was like a hidden call with him and his head coach John Gruden and using Gruden's voice is Gruden's voice. Uh-huh. So now Wait, this is I didn't know it went this deep at all. Bro, I didn't look into if you go on his so yeah, so it's <laughs> like it's like him and, and John Gruden and Gruden's like, yo, A B, what the hell is wrong with you, bro? Like you're wilding out. And AB recorded, and then he put it on his his Instagram. He puts it in a commercial. That's so illegal. It's, it, well, <laughs> oh my god, so illegal. So now at this point, I think the Raiders are like, "Look, bro, um, we're not. I don't think we're going to suspend you, but you're not going to get your thirty million dollars uh, guaranteed money." Okay, so at this point, now AB, you know, he had thirty million dollars that he was guaranteed to get. The Raiders right. are like, "No, because this is." Conduct detrimental to our team. Yeah, you're going nuts, and we're not paying you the extra. We're shit. not yeah, going to yeah, give yeah. you that that guaranteed money. So at this point, everything seemed fine and dandy. Friday night, you were like, "Damn, he released that video of him and John Gruden." That's a little off. But Saturday morning, I'm I'm up at like 9 a.m. and I see AB's Instagram 
Oh, yeah, he and, tagged him. He was like, yo, release me. I saw that. He was like, release me, Raiders. Like, if I'm done. I don't want to be here anymore. And that's when, like, a couple hours later, the Raiders were like, fuck it. We cut you. Now, at this point, everyone's like, well, I, if, I, if you drafted the dude in fantasy football, like myself in one of my leagues, I was like, damn, this is not going to end well. But the joke around social media was watch Bill Belichick oh, and yeah, the New England be- Patriots come and just be like, fuck it, we'll take you. Because they have a history of doing that. Randy Moss, you know. Uh, you know, I was about to say, the, out of all the um, wide receivers that Brady's ever thrown to, he always ends up with the like some of the greatest because of weird situations like this. Oh, yeah. I mean, Randy Moss was one of those guys who um, he was with the Vikings early in his career, and then he went to – he got I guess he got traded to Oakland or he signed with Oakland. Oh, no, he traded to Oakland. And then he was with them for a little while, and he was like, "I don't want to be, I don't want to be a Raider." And then they ended up uh, trading him to the Patriots. Mm-hmm. And at this point, Tom Brady had played with like receivers that weren't like really that good at that point in his career. Brady to Moss was the high school shit, dude. Brady to Moss, yeah, that was two thousand seven, bro. That yeah, was- I remember I was graduating high school, and it was Brady Moss all the way, bro. It was insane what they did. And New England takes like risk on receive. They they brought in guys like Josh Gordon, and they bought in, um, if I'm correct, uh, was it uh, Chad Ochocinco? Yeah, yeah. So they bought. I mean, they they've also had Aaron Hernandez, rest uh-huh. in peace, like Gronk, like guys who are not uh, questionable individuals. <laughs> I to mean, say yeah. The least. yeah, some of yeah, some of the ones you mentioned. So uh. <laughs> so they, so the next thing you know, like four hours later, you see a you see a tweet. And it's like the New England Patriots have signed Antonio Brown. <laughs> so awesome. And you're like, yo. And this is how quickly things like this affect people like me, my life. Mm-hmm. So I made hoods for Antonio Brown, but on the Raiders. So like the So Hoodie Company. Mm-hmm. We have the NFL uh, Players Association license. So I had made an Andrew Luck one. He retired. Gone. Mm-hmm. Um, they already in production, so that all that money's gone. I don't know how what, what they're going to do with them. Send them to a third world country. Well, I think maybe like ten bucks instead of like the normal retail, like twenty five, twenty or whatever it is, mm-hmm. just to get rid of them. Send them um, to a third world country. Uh, so literally last night, I'm working on some hood stuff, and they hit me like, "Yo, can you? We're we're sitting with somebody who's uh, in AB's camp. Can you flip it to the Patriots colors real quick?" So literally, I was like, "Fuck!" I had to open my shit up. I had to like switch all the colors, like. Pantone drop, whatever, then send it to him, and I guess he's already seen it. So, literally, he changed teams in a day. I made a new hood, and he saw the hood within a day. That's fire. That's awesome, bro. Yeah, but that's how quickly stuff like this matters in the fashion world, because it's like you you, you try to anticipate all these off-season moves, mm-hmm. and it's literally up until the day before this shit really starts. Well, you wouldn't. I mean, bro, I mean, two those are two guys that you honestly wouldn't wouldn't think, like, Andrew Luck would have retired. Yeah. And you you wouldn't have thought. I mean, you, there was, a, you know, when, when Antonio Brown went to the Raiders, we all knew that there was a possibility this shit can go sour. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But we didn't know that he would never play an actual <laughs> game. He didn't even play a single game. With the team. Bro, this is crazy. We did not. We never. I, I'll be honest with you. I never thought. But, you know. He might have bought a crib in Oakland already. I'm sure he. I, I don't even. I think Antonio. A lot of people were speculating that, you know, this was. You know, at first you look at it and you say, man, you know, these athletes are wild, bugging out. Then you start saying, man, this guy, maybe this guy's like bipolar and got CTE, man. Maybe yeah. something really, you know, something serious is really going on. With you AB. never know with the football players because, like, they, when they start acting weird, like, we don't know what it is until it, they could be just crazy or it could be the head shit. It could be the, you know, and then you start seeing, like, wait a second. Like, this guy really is, is a patriot. Like, now he's going <laughs> to yep. be a model citizen. <laughs> Hell yeah, he is. I really think, like, you know, I think it was one of the, the greatest trolls. And, and, you know, once again, I mean, the NFL season is, is very long. It's 17 weeks, you know, and a lot can happen in 17 weeks. And there's a lot of drama. But right now it just looks like, I mean, this guy was out there playing chess with the Raiders. It was sick. I mean, because he's still, I mean, here's the thing. If he goes out there and plays to the level that Antonio Brown is capable of playing of, he's probably one of the top you know two or three receivers in the game him deandre hopkins julio jones if he plays the way he plays he's gonna see that money again that's true wait and you know you're not putting obj in the, in the three there obj is uh he's to me just slightly under those guys because okay uh antonio's been doing this for you know six seven years uh, Julio's been doing this, you know, for, you know, seven, eight years. Yep. Uh, you know, um, uh, Hopkins has been doing this, you know, for five straight, six years. I mean, he had one year where he didn't really play that well, but, I mean, it was because of 
poor quarterbacking. But I mean, those guys, OBJ has been in the league for about five years, and I think he he hasn't really gotten through a full season uh, in those five years. I mean, maybe once, or maybe four. You know, he's been in the league since 2014, and he's immensely talented. One yeah. of the best players in the game. I got you. But, I mean, what those three guys have done in the last, I'm just going to say last five years, is unparalleled to any other wide receiver in the game. No, I'm at, with you. At this point right now. You know, and kind of piggybacking off this NFL conversation, um, I was reading an article, a couple articles actually, because I wanted to uh, double up on the source. Mm-hmm. Uh, it sh- there's reports that show Nike's backing of Kaepernick. Um, in his stance, like, like about a year ago, mm-hmm. that was a year ago. You think I know, about that? I remember that. Yeah. It's like a, this, this week, like a year ago. Yeah, I know. Where Nike was like, "Yo, we stand with Cap." We stand with Cap. And uh, their stock initially dropped when that happened, mm-hmm. but now reports are coming back saying that no damage has been done. Of course, man, it's fucking Nike, man. I know some, you know, I know some people are gonna be like, "Yeah, you know what they did," and you know, I'm I'm not gonna. They shouldn't get into that with you know with with Kaepernick and. They need to just make shoes, but it's yeah. like no, I, I you know Nike has proven time in and time out that yeah, they are they are very um, hip to social issues, uh-huh. and we've discussed that on this podcast, bro. Yes. Where you know whether it's nursing mothers or you know um, uh, Muslim uh, women with the hijab, how do you hijab, put, yeah, 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 that yeah. you know a lot of different things that Nike's done, and and you know you see it even with their athletes with LeBron and his, you know I promise you know his schools and mm-hmm. you know they just built a LeBron a um, his own like headquarters and shit. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, so I, him, Serena, and uh, shit, I'm trying to remember the other people. I remember being there, going like, look at the buildings. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, there's a couple athletes that got it, and yeah, he finally got one. Uh, that's, that's what I'm saying, yeah, yeah, that which is cool. That's dope. I wonder if they will eventually cut, try to separate LeBron like they did MJ. MJ, yeah, because they, they're kind of in position to now. They got his own building. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like 17 sneakers. The, the 17th just came out. Yep. What do you think about those? By the way, did you see those? I did see those. I saw the purple colorway. Yeah, I saw the purple one too. Oh, I mean, I'm, yeah, I, I'm gonna be honest with you, and and, I, and this is one thing I, I, I'm gonna say I, for performance. LeBron's are they're solid. They're heavy sneakers. So if you're like a, a a guard or someone, you know they're they're not. They may not be for you. Right. I got you. In terms of um, in terms of being lifestyle sneakers, I I just I can't. The last LeBron that I say was a like a sneaker that you would just be like, I'm gonna wear personally. I would say like the nines. We're we're in that realm. The yeah. nines. Yeah. Maybe the. I remember. I think I tried to. I think I purchased like the elevens. To wear um, casually, but I just ended up returning them because this is no seriously. I mean, you <laughs> no, gotta, I feel you. <laughs> you got to realize, like the first, like you know, eight or nine pairs of LeBrons. The, I remember the South Beach eights, and then the nines were amazing. And then after that, it just kind of um, it's more of a basketball sneaker, man. It's crazy how they can't maintain uh, Nike can't maintain sneaker models. After double digits, <laughs> like at, once they hit two digits, digits, they're like, "All right, we're just gonna." This is purely for one thing. It's not all across the board lifestyle you basketball. You can't really say that per se because I mean, if you compare how many athletes in the Nike circle have had double digit sneakers, what, what LeBron, uh, MJ, uh, I mean Kobe, yeah. I mean, uh, you look at I mean, even you, Kobe. Kobe, after you get to ten. Oh no! Oh, I did the wrong. Whoops! Uh, like no, because the, the Kobe, I, yeah, because I remember the Kobe nines were the last one. I was kind of like, oh shit! Kobe nines were amazing. Uh, yeah, the tens, yeah, the, they're. But but here's the thing, though, you can't wear those like walking around. No, because they're they're basketball sneakers. I mean, if we if we say Jordan, Jordan Jordan ten, uh, people, you know. I, People wear Jordan. I don't wear Jordan tens like that, but Jordan eleven is the the greatest selling. That's Jordan true. Yeah, that's model true. out there. You know, people love the twelves. People love the thirteens. You know, the fourteens and fifteens. People are you know, it's hit or miss. The sixteens were a classic model that people like. Seventeens, I remember they had a briefcase. So I mean, people like certain. You know, I no, of course. Yeah. But what happens to me is, I mean, and and this is these are basketball sneakers. Yeah. And I think what we need to understand is not every sneaker you Nike produces, regardless of who it's for, is gonna is designed to be worn in the club. No, I agree. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Jordans are to me obviously are completely different because bro, motherfuckers still wear Jordan, you know, elevens in the club. 
I know. You know what? A uh, shoe's coming out. Do you remember the Flint? They're coming back. The Flint 13s. Yeah. yeah. Um, f- do, you, do you remember when these came out? I feel like this was a shoe that like kind of divided people because there was either a hard, I'm copying these, or a hard, dude, waste of my time. I I remember being I remember being in college. Yeah, I was in college too. I was uh, 2010, 11. All right. Well, this is this goes to show you that we we do have you and I are different ages. I'm I think five years older than you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was in college in 2005, and they came out. Oh, and, five. 2005, and they they came out, and I remember purchasing two pairs of them. Did and, they retro? Is that why I'm I'm thinking they came out during my college? Because they definitely came out while I was in college. Yes, they they did retro them. Yes. Oh, okay, all right. Well, right. they re retro them. Yeah, I that's mean, what I'm saying. Yeah, they did come back out. Um, so I mean, you know, I, I once again, I mean, those were you. You got to realize to me, there were three colors of the 13s that Jordan 13s that were undeniably amazing. There was the black and red uh-huh. with the 3M. Yep. The Flint, and then the um, do the right thing. Uh, I I call them. There's like the playoffs. The playoffs. Oh, uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, you, you know, once again, that's what I'm saying, Chris. Like, I mean, it, does Nike does Nike fall off after a certain after ten you know ten miles? I'm not gonna say that. I'm gonna say that Kobe's and LeBron's are performance sneakers. Right. They're not like like I said, Jordans. I, I, I you know which I, has stood the test of time. You know, people still love. You uh-huh. know, Jordans, but I think once again you start saying, Well, what what sneaker do I like playing ball in? Do I like playing ball in the LeBron thirteens or the LeBron fifteens? Or right. like, you know what I'm saying? Or yeah, the- probably the later uh, yeah, because I the later stuff, uh the things that I've tried on have definitely been more performance based and I would definitely think that playing basketball in them would be way more they they seem comfy and fun to play in. Yeah. Um, all the I would never wear them off court though. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, a lot of you know and, 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 <laughs> you know, never and to be honest with you, I mean, the way, where I am in life, and you know, obviously everyone's in different stages of their life, but I can't, I couldn't wear anything past the Jordan, you know, eight, and and you know, maybe I can wear a olive nine, but you know, eight are really my limit too. I have a pair of tens, uh, but I think I've complained about them squeaking a lot, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I couldn't. I mean, I I couldn't even. I can't tell you the last time I purchased a pair of tens. I think I was in college. I think it was like you know, the fourteen, fifteen, you know, yeah. years ago. I only got those because they're free. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, and and, and the Elevens, I I just can't wear anymore. Twelves, uh, I'm not a fan of. You know, in terms of wearing them, I still see where people love them, but no, of course. You know, I just I feel like no, I can't do that, man. So, all right, we'll stick in. Actually, wait, the, you want to go the? Tell me which way you want to go. This is a pick your own segue. You want to go Air Force One or you want to go Force? Um, we, since we're on Jordans, we could do Force. So the what the Force? Are coming out. Yeah, I saw. I saw those. Um, do you want to? I I don't know where they got this idea for the what does. And I understand the concept is that like they're just completely mismatched shoes mm-hmm. at the you know baseline. That's what the idea is. Mm-hmm. Who the fuck are these really for? They've made a couple of these, and like I've never thought any of them have been good. Hmm. I actually, I actually, um, even though I sold my pair, I had a pair of what the ones, and um, and I, I, I. I I liked them, but I didn't. It wasn't one of those things that I was like, "Oh, I got, I love them." The LeBron, what those are the craziest ones, if I'm remembering correctly. But I remember all these. I'm like, dude, who the fuck would wear these? Yeah, remember these? These are know. these are nuts. I think the best what the um, Kobe eight what the was great. I wish I knew. Like, were they just high in a meeting? They're just like, dude, let's just like make two different. She was completely. I, well, uh, the first one was a dunk. That this, was, this joint, right? Uh, no, not that one. The, oh. uh, the low SBs. Oh, oh, the, these, okay. Those yeah. were the ones that I think made people say, um, and and you know, and what they're going for in terms of on the secondary market is insane, bro. And um, I don't know how. Well, I mean, they they, they took some of the greatest, uh, you know, some of the greatest uh, no, SBs at the yeah, time. Yeah, no, they mismatched some of the best shit that you could do on a sneaker. Well, yeah, they got the elephant print toe box. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, like the Burberry print or whatever. Like they even got like the Heineken looking shit on them. Like I, I feel it. I get it. I just can't imagine anyone actually wearing these. Yeah, you. I mean, I could. They're as, you would wear those. Would I wear those? Yeah, yeah. You would, would wear those around. Yeah, I would actually. I would. That's very uncharacteristic to me. 
it, is it of me? Yeah. What? Okay. Someone, bro, you never mismatch nothing. No, I mean, bro. You're, I'm not saying you're matchy matchy, but you're pretty coordinated. So no. you throwing these on, I'm like, what are you doing, dude? I I actually enjoy uh, this certain. Uh, I mean, when it comes to sneakers, I'm not gonna sit here and like I can wear. I'll wear some wild sneakers, bro. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, I've seen you wear some wild shit, but I'm. But I, it's always been semi coordinated. I mean, yeah, I like to coordinate, but I mean, when it comes to the feet, where I mean, I'm not, if I wear what the dunk, you know, I'm not gonna sit here and wear uh, a logo filled t shirt or you know some. Oh jeans yeah, you with can't. Rip. You no, gotta, you got nah. the, the sneakers are the the main piece of the. Uh, of the outfit. You know? I'm going to go on StockX real quick and see what some of the what those are doing. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I want to recap my StockX experience because actually, uh, actually, no, I'll just say it while I'm looking these up. Um, this is a super convenient way so, uh, to sell sneakers. Um, I did have one thing, though, mm-hmm. where, all right, so one of the shoes I was selling was the off-white Converse. Uh, not the first ones, the clear ones, but the mm. the white ones with the dashes in the sole. Mm-hmm. So I listed them as a women's... Eight, because mm-hmm. that's what they I that's what they were a women's eight, but it also says men's six on the box. Mm-hmm. So then they hit me really like, oh, you mislabeled them and sent them back. And I was Wait, like, you said a women's eight? Yeah, but on the box they also labeled them as a men's six. Okay. So they said I mislabeled them because they went up the men's size. Mm-hmm. Those fucking pigs, going with the patriarchy. Like, come on guys, let's get this neutral shit going. It also says women's eight. Mm-hmm. No, but they sent it back and cost me like 30 bucks. But I was kind of like, dude, what the fuck? You guys know. It says it, women's eight on the box. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That was my only thing. But other than that, it's super convenient. Um, All right, the what does on stock right now, we're going for 4500 Um, If I go into my size, though, a nine and a half, they're $7,200. Yes. Which, that's too much. So a lot. And there's a lot of... If- if I had $7,200 to spend on a pair of sneakers, uh, it would not be that. No, not at all. Although, I, I've, I haven't looked at these in a while. I forgot the pigeon was on there. Yeah. Yeah, they got a bunch of shit on here. Nike buck. What's the buck from on the heel cap of the right foot? You don't know? Yeah, I don't know either. But either way, yeah, these are... Conceptually, like I I like them. I just would never wear any of the what this. But yeah. So yeah. So now, so back to what we were saying. There's a what the four coming out uh, this winter. Uh huh. And um, I, I actually, it's not a bad uh, sneaker. I think I just don't like the um, the base. And when I say the base, I wish it was a black base. Sneaker. Yeah, it is white. The white base sneaker, which I'm never mad at. Um, and compared to the other what the state, it's very low key. Uh, it's very. It is very low. I mean, they use cement uh, fours. They use fire red fours. They use military blue. They got the mesh, which is key. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a, it's um, I think what happens is, yeah, the, the uh, the white base kind of messes it up for me. I just don't. I, I just conceptually, it bothers me. I wish they, I wish they sold them like they had the left too. So then, like, you could. So I wish they made a swapped version so you can get a mismatched, but then. Get another pair and then have the both correct. Does that make sense? Understood. Yeah, that'd be sick to me. Because the when you, you the legacy on these is just you, you can't maintain them. Once they get to the point where they're beaters, because then you just got dirty ass fucking mismatched Mismashy. beater shoes. Yeah, I get it. Mm-hmm. Can't do it. When they're clean, I kind of get it. Because you're like, oh, okay, like that's what they're supposed to look like. But when they're dirty, it's just like, dude, you're wearing two different shoes. But I don't know. That's just me. No, I understand. No, but the other thing I wanted to talk to you about was, did you see the Air Force uh, Ones for the Clippers and the Lakers? Uh, yes, I did. <laughs> Yo, I want those in every color. Those are fire. How did they not make those for every basketball team? I don't know. I think they're fucking sweet. I, I, I really want them in Celtics colors. But uh, why did LA get the special treatment? I'm Be- confused. Because it's fucking Lakers, bro. I, I mean, I know. I understand what you're saying. But like, how do you not do this for more than one team? Air Force One, Lakers. I mean, a basic, uh, basic uh, white and uh, air yeah, but I like the split that they have on them. The split is fucking sweet. Wait, where'd they go? Of course, I'm never gonna find. Oh yeah, these joints right here. Yeah, yeah. See, like how they split them in the back. I know. Fuego, and it's got like the satin shit. Yeah, it's, it's solid. It's a solid. I also thing. like the hanging swoosh. They cut the swoosh off before it goes into the heel tab. Oh, uh, it's solid. You're unimpressed. I mean, they're solid. I mean, it's nothing, nothing <laughs> yeah, I'm, nothing I'm way more impressed than you because I'm I'm over here going like, give me all the colors. 
nothing I would break my neck for, but I enjoy, you know, they No, are, these aren't these aren't supposed to break your neck. These are supposed to be just clean. No, I'm saying break my neck to get. Oh, I got you. I was saying like walking around. No, I wouldn't, not. I wouldn't double take these. I'd just be like, oh, those are nice. Damn, man. I really want those. I'm very jealous that uh, LA got two colorways and we didn't get any. The green in the back. I, I've never seen them do that with any of the Air Forces, so I got super excited when I saw that, and I hope they take that construction and apply it to more things. But that's just me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know, man. I mean, Jesus. I want those really bad. Um, Moving on, we'll continue with basketball real quick. I was reading that um, Young Ball, the God. Lonzo of yeah. the New Orleans Pelicans. Yeah. I was reading an article saying that um, I guess he has to switch out his zo twos every quarter, and because they all they rip. Oh, that was that was last season. Yes, oh, was it his rookie? It was actually his rookie season. Yeah, but I guess he was just on a podcast and he was telling. He I guess he admitted it mm-hmm. that he was like, yeah, they they rip every time um, he plays them, so he has to switch them out every quarter. <laughs> they are five hundred dollars shoes that rip in fifteen minutes. That is correct, and they were not five hundred dollars. Uh, yeah, they no, were. No, I'm saying they were not worth five. Oh no, no, <laughs> they were not worth five hundred. Barely, they were worth uh, barely five dollars. Yes, uh, <laughs> yeah. So when he played in summer league, uh, his uh, his rookie season, um, that uh, he said they were so badly made they would break after twelve minutes of wear. His uh, manager used to bring him a backpack full of kicks to every game. So uh, you know, it's uh, so uh, is the, is Big Baller Brand officially done? Hold on. So okay, this is what Lonzo uh, is quoted saying: "Them zeal twos I was playing in." They was not ready. If you literally have those shoes from those games, they're exploded. Uh, so he's like, uh, I'm like, cool, I can get a quarter in, but that's it. We had to switch them out every quarter. And that, and it's crazy because right when I switched my shoes, then all of a sudden I got good again. And um, <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> It's a funny way to put that. It's it's interesting, man, because, you know, that's his, his you know, he's very, uh, he's also dissatisfied with, uh you know the the brand's co-founder Alan Foster, who you know Lonzo mm-hmm. have uh, basically he has a lawsuit against him. Yeah, because he was stealing from stealing him, stealing like 1.5 million from his business. We stayed up to date on that pretty uh, consistently, I think. Covered yeah. that in the pod. Yeah, bro. So I mean, you know, um, you know, Levar Levar's is just fucking interesting. He's got another kid uh, who's gonna be in the NBA probably next season. Uh, no, the what the guy who got caught in Korea stealing shit? No, that that's uh, that is uh, what's that's the middle one. It's the middle one, uh, Leangelo. Yeah, uh, he has a younger. They have a younger oh, kid. Oh, uh, Le- Le- he took yeah, he took the one who uh, botched the dunk. That's the one I know him as. He, oh, yeah, I saw a video of him trying to dunk and like it, he blew it and fell pretty bad. And, really? then, and then right after that, that's when he took him out of school. That's the only reason why I remember that. I mean, well, LaMelo is uh, supposed to be, a, he's supposed to be very, so I've watched plenty of clips on LaMelo. Uh, he, I mean, I feel like, you know, he's playing professionally overseas now. Uh, in Turkey, right? I'm not sure where, bro, but I know right. he's playing overseas. Him uh, and the middle one were playing in Turkey, I remember, for a hot second. But, I don't know. I mean, cut. To wrap up all the basketball stuff, uh, well, wait. Do you think that Big Baller Brand's kind of just like over now? Do I think it's over? Um, I mean, you got the main. I don't. I don't. I can't tell you when it was ever really end. I mean, I don't know. There was a bunch of people supporting it when they first came I, out. I think people were supporting it because people were happy to see a black man. Yeah, of course. Uh, have yeah, have they wanted to support be, black business. Be a, a a boss in his own <clears throat> right, but it was comical because you know it's like. You want to support, like you're like you know you watch this guy and you like you're like man fuck you know this guy's in his kids' lives and you know he's doing all this stuff and you know granted he's a little out of control at times, <laughs> but um you know then you see well all right how much is he selling these things for you like five hundred dollars you're like I just can't get behind that yeah because you know at the end of the day we uh I mean we we laugh when Nike charges us you know two hundred plus yeah. two fifty you know and you're like what the fuck and for a uh, a sneaker that has no reputation or that you know and and they're saying well we're going to charge you 500 bucks for it yeah it's a lot i think that's a lot and that's that's laughable and, I, and you see that it turned out to be almost like a fraud company yeah him it's not looking good for some of the black entrepreneurs going on right now because like with soldier boy and then this like two of the most prominent like i'm almost there mm-hmm. like we can almost start our own shit and then it just tanks yeah it's a like, damn yeah, bro. So, you know, we, we shall see. Um, I do want a pair of those, actually. The more that everyone talks shit about them, the more I want a pair. 
Really? Yeah, because <laughs> they're not bad looking, mm-hmm. and I'm not playing ball in them. No, they're not bad at all. I w- if I can get them for two fifty, I might get them. But there's no way I'm paying a full retail for those. Uh, that's nuts. No, there's too much other heat out there. Uh, but to wrap up the uh, NBA talk uh, in general, um, I read that the Raptors are bringing back the uh, Dino jersey, and I'm hyped for that. Oh, right, great. You bring back the Dino jersey when your best player uh, went to the <laughs> <laughs> Really genius, Toronto. <laughs> that's uh, how you can put anything Who the fuck is going to buy? I mean, uh, people will buy a Pascal Siakam jersey. Uh, I'll I mean, always rock a Vince Carter one. I mean, well, no, Vince is all, I mean, Vince is out there. I mean, we're talking about the current jerseys like Kyle Lowry and Siakam and fucking <laughs> OG and, and Jonas, uh, not Jonas Valanciunas, but Mark Gasol. I mean, bro, y'all should have did that shit last year <laughs> when y'all knew you only had Kawhi for the fucking so season funny. come on man let's get out of here Toronto you got <laughs> your your fifth or sixth seed at best good luck congratulations on winning your, your NBA championship what's next baby uh, you want to talk music uh if we're gonna talk about Kanye album I really don't want to get into that because it's like yo bro is he really gonna drop an album no he did buy uh a ranch though in Wyoming 14 oh, mil so- he bought, oh, okay, so because he can't rent any more uh, <laughs> uh, ranches in Wyoming because people got pissed at him <laughs> yeah, last time. Yeah, he's he, like, fuck it, I'll buy it. He just got to buy one this time. Um, like I said, man, if you you know, I love Kanye. I love him. You know, I used to, I used to defend him all the time. I mean, I thought he was, you know, honestly, when, when I was younger, probably the greatest voice of our generation. But this new Kanye, I mean, granted. I'm more pro Kanye than I have ever been. Really? Yeah. I mean, listen, I'm not anti Kanye, but I just feel like, bro, at this point, I'm just, you know, it's like, all right, you keep teasing us with music and then you drop these albums and then they're like, it's, oh, they're not finished or you're always like continuing. Like, it's kind of like annoying. It's like, put your focus on, on a music project if you want to be a musician. But I feel like he's just one of them dudes that's just like trying to fight the younger generation, man. I, you know, I'm with you in, in being annoyed about the music, but, um, I'm. My thing is, is I understand him doing so many things at once. Trying to like, you can't manage all that shit. Like you, you got your clothing brand, sneaker brand, mm-hmm. music, and then you're also like whatever weird real estate shit you're doing. That's a lot of shit to do. It's a lot, man. And, that, you and know, I, yeah, I totally get. Like I am annoyed as a Kanye music fan. As a music fan, yeah. I mean, because. I think what I you know, and this is gonna sound crazy, but like people really do miss the old Kanye. And I think when you set the bar so high with his first, you know, four or five albums, and now it's just like it's like really Kanye. This shit is you know like the the yay like the the that you know, worst album ever. Wasn't the worst album, but it just out of all his, it's easily the worst. Easily, man, and you know, and I think that's what I, and and you know, if you listen, you know, I. I can never say, yo, stop doing music because you've you've blessed us with, in the past 15 years, some of the greatest, you know, inspirational to me music that I've mm-hmm. ever listened to. Mm-hmm. It's been great. But, you know, you see these clips of him doing, like, Sunday service and shit like that, and, and then he's like, oh, I'm going to create this gospel album, and then Kem is, like, writing the track list on her yeah. social media. And then, you know, he's like, oh, it'll be on September 27th or whatever, and then it's like September 27th comes rolling around or whenever the, the release date is, and then it's not there. Wait, he was supposed to release Yandi like November last year. Yeah, you right? got that's what I'm that's what I'm saying. So yeah, it's man, like it's, a lot. it's like how much, you know, I mean, I understand that you got love for music and but if hit us with hit us with that shit when it's finished and then start teasing us. I know. I agree. Don't don't sit here and be like, Yeah, y'all, September twenty seventh and you only got two songs done and then, you know, then when it's supposed to come out at midnight on whatever day it is and then it's three AM and people are like, Damn, this shit still ain't come out and then it's it's ten p it's ten PM the next day and it's like, Oh, that shit still ain't come out yet and it's just like Yeah, the uh what was the worst blunder? Uh a Tiana or Nas? I'm trying to remember which one came out the latest. I think it was Nas's. <laughs> I think it was Tiana. Really? Yeah. Well, I'm both of them though, he was kind of like, I guess they didn't even hear the final cut, and they just kind of came out like, "Hey, this is your album." That, that, <laughs> stuff, that, that's the type of stuff I'm talking about. So it's like, yeah. yo, focus on whatever you can focus on, bro. Um, uh, do we? Oh wait, did you see the um in the Discord? One of the homies hit us with that article that complex did where they made each uh yeezy based off uh, each album he came out with i'm just here so i don't get fined bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm just in the discord so i don't get fined for all you for all you guys on the discord i love y'all to death but i don't even really be checking like seeing shit like chris had to tag me in something just so i can see it because 
if you write and you be like, hey, Lawrence, and you don't tag me, then I'm probably yeah, you gotta, not going to see it. You got to at him. <laughs> at me. Yeah, there you go. And then I'll respond. But um, no, I, I did. I saw that on social media. I saw the. Um, I, that, that stuff to me is cool. That's just like, you know, some whatever bland content just to fill stuff. But yeah. I did like some of the colorways in there. So, like, I, I, some of those I wouldn't be mad if they actually came out they with. Need to put, they need to do that with the Nike Yeezy. Don't, don't fucking put, don't, don't put the album covers on an Adidas Yeezy. I'm off that. Yo, man. when I worked for Slam Hype, mm-hmm. um, one of the things that uh, I was working on was uh, I had to imagine what the Adidas shoe because this was so when I worked there he hadn't made any Yeezys yet with Adidas when I worked there he had uh, left Nike and they announced that he was with Adidas and they were like all right Chris can you come up with what do you think the shoe will look like mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and I mm-hmm. mismatched a bunch of shit I even like remember when they thought um because New Slave just came out so I even had like the Adidas I think Jeremy Scott did it where they the shackle and shit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I did all that. So looking at that, I re- I remember that, and I was like, oh, this is fun. I remember making dumb content for no reason. Um, but yeah, that was cool. So get in the Discord, guys. Discord's fun. You know, yeah, we're get, all, get in the fucking we're all Discord, chatting yo. in there. Um, but all right, so continue with music though. Uh, do we care that Nikki retired or no? You know what? I'm gonna say this, man. She's been like to me, like looked at as a pariah in the music industry, and I say pariah. People just really don't like Nikki, right? And um, and what she did for. Uh, rap and even you know for women's rap and just rap in general, uh, I think she uh, she definitely deserves more respect. I think she does too. And um, you know it's like it's like the first she was like and I'm not gonna sit here and you know I mean obviously you got like you know MC Light Queen Latifah the Brat like all these hard like women Missy, that yeah. Missy that that paved the way for a Nicki but like the the way Nicki like attacked the game and how she was hitting shit like she. Like, she took it to a level that, like, a rapper like Trina wasn't able to go to, if that makes sense. I agree. And and um, and um if there was no Nicki Minaj, there would be no fucking Cardi B. There's no the, Meg Thee Stallion. No Meg Thee Stallion. So, granted, I've heard she's had, you know, a lot of, like, she's had her own, you know, breakdown. You know, you've seen it. And, oh, you know, yeah, I've, we've seen we've it. Seen oh, it. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I've heard that she's had, like, a, you know, allegedly, like, a bad attitude for the last couple of years or, you know, and it's been like people really, they were hoping that Cardi was there. So that way she, you know, Nikki would flop. You know, if yeah. that makes sense, like they can replace Nikki. But um, what she's done for rap and shit, and just the game in general. I mean, you know, that, you know, 2009, 2010, uh, Nicki Minaj is like you know she's up there, bro. And you that's put, Monster Nicki, right? Uh, yeah, mo- yeah, yeah, that's Monster Nicki, and, and and I think you could put her up there. I'm not, you know, she had a run where I mean, bro, you know, oh oh five to oh eight, Lil Wayne, like oh you know ninety nine to oh three J, like yeah. you know, like you could say you know. You know, 2009 to 2011, 12, Nikki was... Yeah, once Starship hit, even though that wasn't necessarily like a rap song that mm-hmm. you and I could vibe with, it was a, definitely a radio hit that got her, damn, threw her fucking into the limelight. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. you know, so once again, I mean, yeah, she's retiring, uh, allegedly to start a family. I mean, you know, that, I look at her retirement like I look at Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck will be back in three years with the Patriots, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> <laughs> if Andrew Luck replaces Tom Brady, that would be so fire. Fucking crazy, man. <laughs> that'd be so, sick as shit ever. Hold up for one second. Uh, <laughs> hold up, my boy's calling me. Yo, Mike, I'm recording my pod. Oh, never. Yo, Mike, I'm recording my podcast. Your team sucks. Uh, I'll holler <laughs> at you later, bro. I'll hit you up later. So, <laughs> which Mike was that? Was that a comedian, Mike? Nah, it's my boy, Mike. Oh, uh, shout out to Mike. Uh, I guess last thing on music, and then we'll move on to something else. Is um. Mm-hmm. So Ariana Grande is like suing Forever Twenty One because they used a model that looks like her. Oh really? Yeah, which is the dumbest shit. Also, Ariana looks like every young girl. Yeah. Just yo, know, kind of the mascara, the ponytail, and yeah, you have an Ariana Grande. Mm-hmm. If you got a small tan, then yeah, you're fine. There uh, you go. So I don't know. That's weird. I just want to call her out and be like, "You're full of shit. You look like every small female. Like, you calm do. down, calm down your face." Um, all right, anyway, going on from there, uh, what about Supreme Update? As our su- main Supreme correspondent, what do you got? Any purchases lately? Uh, I copped the uh, the Supreme Dunk, low, uh, the red, white and red on uh, Thursday from their website, which was an absolute shit show. I Thursday believe morning. it. It was a uh, lag. It, it, the, the, the shoes dropped later than 11 o'clock when it did. It was oh, lag, wow. lag, 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 lag. Uh, you know. You got a pair. What size? I got my size, size 12. Uh, you going to wear them? You going to skate them? 
<laughs> Am I going to I'll probably skate in them shit. Yeah, so. you're going to kick flip? Yeah, I'm going to kick flip and then I'm going to go <laughs> play basketball and um and shit and uh yeah, I don't know, man. I always I always just buy shit in my size and then how I'm feeling in, you know, in a few months determines what I'm going to do with them. Oh, you know? I never talked to you. I know I tagged you in the video. I know you saw it, but I was on uh Governor's Island and there was like a unicycle convention. Yeah, I just see that. <laughs> they were playing basketball, basketball. on unicycles. I was like, "Yo, this shit is fire." Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yo, looking at a dude wearing b- brand new fucking Jordan's playing in, on a unicycle. This shit was know, great. That shit was great. I know. They were all literally wearing basketball shoes, but none of their feet touched the ground. Like, no, why no. do you need performance <laughs> footwear to, for a unicycle basketball game? No, I know. That's uh, fucking funny, man. Kanye would go out and score 3,000 points on them. <laughs> so, what was that fake headline that he was playing he in a hand- He scored 108 <laughs> in a wheelchair basketball game, a handicap. <laughs> It was so funny. That's fucking Kanye for you. Um, uh, well, that's dope, man. So your size, uh, you gonna hold on to him for a while? Or you're just gonna get rid of him? Nah, man, I'm gonna hold on to him. I mean, you know, it's so funny. I, man, I remember uh, seven years ago, I went to Supreme and I copped a pair of uh, the the red and uh, cement uh, SBs, the mm-hmm. uh, SB, uh, and um, I sold them shits for a. a uh, a measly, I think, like four fifty or some shit like that. Damn. And um, and now, you uh, they are moving for almost two grand. I'm not saying holding them, hold them for sixty years. But no, but yeah, the the red uh, cement as uh, lows. So That's I had got nuts. these and I sold them for around four and some change. And I think it was like a size ten and a size ten right now. I mean, granted, you know, uh, I didn't sign in because I don't trust StockX anymore. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I mean, once again, I mean, I'm not saying I'm holding these forever. But, I mean, I'll make a decision because that's what I do. A lot of times I just buy shit and then I just flip it. Or if I if I want them. But I, I think I might keep them. They're a nice sneaker. Yeah. I'm, I I was saying to you off mic that uh, probably the black and gray are my favorite because they go with everything. But, um, yeah, I mean, we collab coming from supreme in my opinion granted their history but i am not saying they're a bad shoe i just think supreme yeah lazy. Uh, well, well based off based off you know the history of what they've yeah. done in terms of uh low sbs and shit you know this is obviously <clears throat> their worst i'm trying to think um i don't like what were they the tailwinds yeah, the, tailwinds yeah yeah i'm not really feeling though and then they also did a tennis shoe i to honestly the Foam posits are growing on me. Remember they they came out with those ones that look like uh, I know uh, yeah Sashi yeah mm-hmm. those are growing on me as far as a collab. So uh, the elephant dunk and the foam probably my favorites. Unless I'm trying to remember if there's any other crazy ones that I liked. I don't think so. What are the white and reds that are going on right now? Uh, right now, I mean, if you try to get like a size eight or a nine, you yeah, know, we're over. talking four hundred plus right now. That's not even that bad at the moment. No, but it's gonna get bad. Yeah, at least I wonder, <clears throat> cause what was the, what was the last shoe we were talking about? Like last week or the week before, it was like a fucking fifteen hundred bucks the day they came out. Uh, what it doesn't matter. But the 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 thing is, is that like I, I don't I like what do you dictate? How do you? How do these not go for that much on day one? Oh, because of the hype. I mean, you know, and also I think, you know, it's it's interesting. Yeah, you're <clears> right. <throat> some sneakers, I mean, some sneakers, they come out the gate strong. Yeah. And then they go down. I think we might have been talking about the satin ones or some shit like that. Oh, oh yeah. I think they were. Or no, uh, Black Toes. Sat, yeah, well, satin ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, satin yeah, black yeah, toes. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Some sneakers start out strong, then they tank a little bit. Some sneakers start out slow, and then they just... They just fucking do numbers out the gate. I don't know what what de- what dictates the market, but yeah, bro, it's uh, it's some interesting shit. Cause and, like, no, you can go go. Oh no, I was gonna say because sometimes you'll see, uh, you know, especially like anything like a pair of unions. I mean, dude, they were selling for like you know five six hundred dollars in in November, and now, you know, less than a year steady later, steady climb, steady climb. I mean, fifteen hundred. That is, there's I haven't seen a, those dip once. You know and. And then you look at like you know off white Chicago and and that started out at you know originally three thousand then it then when the wider release happened it went down to like twelve hundred mm-hmm. and then it climbed up and now it's you know thirty five four grand you know you don't know I mean if you you know it's it's almost like you know it is like the stock market if you want something no it's you, nuts 
it's nuts. If you want something, you, you either get in when you can at the lowest point you think it's going to be, or you could buy something. And we've seen, I've seen sneakers that I've had, um, the, the Jordan one, uh, I'll never forget this. It was, they were, uh, they were exclusively sold at, uh, foot action. They were like okay. the PS, they were like a PSNY, but they weren't PSNY. Right. They were the general re- release. And I remember, I remember they were only sold at foot action and dudes were paying out the gate like nine hundred, a thousand dollars because they thought they were super limited, right? Had the the address of the the Jumpman, the Jordan store, and yeah. then now, bro, you can get them shits for one seventy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just goes back to fucking what I was saying when I was in Portland, and the fucking shoes were cheaper on StockX than they were in the store with the Nike discount. It's nuts. Yeah, it's nuts, bro. Some of these shoes, it doesn't make any sense. Like, all right, so going back to um, our boy Luke getting the Krugers. Which we have to have him on because there's a follow up story to that whole thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, why is that shoe ten grand? It doesn't make any sense. It all depends on the scarcity, the hype. It's a lot of different things <laughs> in it, bro. But yeah, um, I mean, the market keeps expanding too. Flight Club has a uh, pop up in London now, and mm-hmm. they're opening another flagship in Miami. Uh, well, Flight Club, they have a Miami store already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they're. Is that what it was? Oh, okay. Fight I got Club you. has a Miami store. Well, they're opening a, a London pop-up. I guess uh, when I was reading the thing, I that I thought it was a new Miami spot. But Yeah, they have, I mean, uh, they, they definitely have, uh, it's L.A., uh, Florida, and then. Um, we established the best sneaker markets are New York, L.A., obviously, and then it's Miami, Chicago, <clears throat> And that's it, right? Those are kind of the top. Well, you said New York, L- L- New York, I think is number one. Yeah, definitely. Then there's L.A. And then you know what? I'll put Boston in there. Wait, Boston. Wait, 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 hold on. So you said New York, L.A. Where else? Miami, uh-huh. Florida area, Chicago. Uh huh. Chicago. And definitely. then I'll, I'll say Boston at five. I would say Chicago <laughs> over uh, Florida. Yeah, I agree with that. I was. I was in no particular order. I would say Chicago. Yeah, uh, New York, Chicago, L.A. Um, like Miami, Atlanta. Oh, Atlanta, Atlanta's good. Atlanta's I'll still good. put Boston over. Atlanta, uh, just because some the brands are there, not all of them, but the majority of the brands are there. You got Bodega, you got Concepts, mm-hmm. uh, higher end. There's the Tannery stuff. Uh, yeah, no, Boston's solid. Boston, yeah. So this, I mean, there's some good sneaker markets. I'm sorry, like I said, if you listen to this podcast and and you're fucking and you live in you know um, G- Gulfport, Mississippi. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, you only have like a foot action or a foot locker, you know, sucks sometimes, but, uh, you know. Also, shout out to our overseas listeners. Overseas listeners, we got to holler at y'all too, because I'm sure, you know. Yeah. Oh, actually, our overseas listeners, tell us what we should look into overseas, because uh, I know there's, I mean, some of the basic stuff, like Soulbox, mm-hmm. that's one of my favorite stores, the one in Berlin, uh, Pada, mm-hmm. I pay attention to, uh, I'm trying to think of other foreign brands, uh, but our stores, but. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to pay attention. Dude, you know what? What up? Actually, low-key, there is an ill skate shop in Australia called um, One Line. Is that what it was? Fuck. I'm never going to remember this. It's a skate shop. Uh, I was talking to Baco about them. One Line Club. Yeah, One Line is... Dude, these guys are fucking good. I like these guys a lot. They're Melbourne. Some solid fucking shit. It's graffiti-based. Okay. Okay. It's like early, early... It's like 90 skate vibes. I think this is why I like them a lot. Yeah, it definitely has 90 skate vibes to it, bro. Yeah, they're they're pretty simple. They're it's a lot of logo flip shit. It's nothing uh I would say that's groundbreaking. But look, they got a nice little Sega joint right there. Oh, that is nice. Yeah, uh but no, it's brands like this where I'm like, "Damn. There's some really good shit outside of the US. Mm-hmm. Like the states doesn't have all the shit held down." Mm-hmm. So yeah, you guys got to let us know, but if you go to um oneline.com.au, these guys are cool. I like their logo a lot. They like did the at symbol, but they got the one in it, and then um, one line, which is referencing to I guess uh, one line like throw ups, like uh, quick graffiti throws. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I like the I like the brand, I like the store, I like everything about them. So yeah, I want to know more about I, dude because if there's sleepers like this around, like I want to order some shit like this because this shit is fire. No, I feel you. I feel you. I agree. Yeah. Um, what am I looking forward to uh, this week? You asked me, Chris. Um, <laughs> yep, Segway King, Nike Sakai. We're looking at uh, three colorways dropping uh, the twelfth, which is Thursday. I'm looking forward to trying to at least attempt to get one. Nice. And um, and the one that I want is the white and gray. So okay, I'm with is, you on that. Yeah, that yeah. Is, uh, probably the best one. Probably the best one out of the three that are releasing. That followed by the black, followed by the the purple Barney joints. Oh, all right. 
Um, and I'm looking forward to trying to sh uh, at least attempt to get one so I can, because I want the white and uh, gray. They're uh, very fire. And um, I missed out on the blue and red, which I think is the ultimate uh, Nike Sakai. And I think these are uh, shoe of the year, uh, at least in my opinion right now. Wait, hold on. What are you saying shoe of the year is? The Sakai. Okay. The, the five, the, the, the waffles. Not yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Not the blazers, but the waffles. I think you, you're going to, when, when it's all said and done, I think you're going to have them and then the Travis Scott, you know, okay. line. But those right. are the two, top two shoe of the year. Because so we gave Travis we, Scott, we, we said Travis was shoe of the summer. summer. Which we're still there. Um, Yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay. I mean, Travis Scott, the white and brown. Because uh, I'm down, you can convince me otherwise, but right now I have it up there. Yeah, I'm, that's up there. So, But you're thinking of the year. I, when it's all said and done. When it's all, when it's all, like it, it, as of right now, I I would honestly, I would honestly say the Sakai's are the shoe of the year. Huh? They okay. are beautiful. When you see them, if if I, when I see people walking, right? Uh huh. And I see dudes wearing the Sakai's, I'm like the the uh, blue and red. I'm like those are a beautiful shoe. Now a lot of people can't pull them off. Right. And I will say that, but a lot of people, because a lot of people could just pull off a Jordan One. Um, you know what it is? You have to be small. You have to be a small person because that shoe has so much going on in bigger shoe sizes. It just looks nuts. Okay. So I did see a guy and the guy was like, no disrespect. He was sloppily built. Right. <laughs> and, he was, and he was wearing the blue and red joints with like yellow shorts. Yeah. And it was kind of like a little off putting, but the, the sneaker itself is so beautiful that it was like, ah, I'll give you a pass. But I know what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, obviously, you know, Certain sneakers in smaller sizes are beautiful. Yes. When you see when you see a, a woman wearing a size, you know, seven and a half or eight or whatever, you know, I mean, you're like, God damn, those are or you know, six or whatever. Yeah. A smaller size is fire. Even when you see a little dude wearing a seven, you know, you're like, oh, shit's just fire. But it all depends on the person because if you wear a size thirteen or fourteen, this is why Asians look fire in everything. Chris's words, not mine. <laughs> they do. No, I, I feel you. Yeah, I do. It, because that's why they're the lead in fashion is because they're all small. They have the they can fit everything, mm -hmm. and yeah, the smaller sizes look more, more normal, and the, you can let them hang a little better. There we go. Shout out to my Asian people. <laughs> there we go. Um, but yeah, I'm with I'm with you on that. Okay, you know I'm kind of looking forward to these. Uh, I I just pulled them up on my computer screen here. They I saw these. It's like these weird Adidas. They're called skate cups, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But they're like a tennis fusion um, skate hybrid. Mm -hmm. You were talking about what you're looking forward to. I'm looking forward to these. I don't know when they come out. I just saw them. I liked them. I wrote them down. I put them on the docket. I think these are clean as shit. So I want a pair of them. But that's what I'm looking forward to. Okay. Um, but I. That's kind of it, think man. That's it, man. I think that's it. Is there anything else? A shout out to Will Smith for that. Uh, they're doing that shit with the Tiger brand in Japan. Oh, that's fire. Yeah. Uh, um, the 350 V3s in all black actually look kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, so I like those. And I kind of think that's it. Okay. Well, we're done. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening to <laughs> Sub Podcast. <laughs> I hope everyone enjoys uh, week one of the NFL season. Uh, I hope you do well in your leagues, dude. How I'm, many you got? I, I'm in four leagues uh, this year. Uh, same, I, same as always. I try to stay in four, no more, because uh, it's a lot of, it's a lot of fucking, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot, bro. It's a lot. No, I understand. Yeah. I don't, I don't do it anymore. I gave up. I understand, man. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward uh, to to this year. Hopefully. Uh, winning a lot of money in a lot of leagues. Did I mention on the podcast how one year I entered a fantasy thing, didn't check it once, and I won the whole league? Really? Yeah, that was my first time ever doing fantasy. Is uh, it was the year Drew Brees had his breakout year, and I drafted him as my quarterback. Really? Were you were you playing with like family and friends and shit? Yeah, family. friends. I was gonna say friends. Family. Yeah, it's got to be one of those. Because if you play in a league with sharks, that that is not happening. You have to check your lineup no, every I, week. I literally didn't check it once. And my friends informed me I was in the finals. Mm -hmm. And then I won the finals and I got whatever money. It was chump change. But, you know, at the time I was like, oh, this is a good hunk of cash. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I haven't really been able to get into it. Because when you win without doing anything. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like, the amount of CU, look, at you're like doing it right now. Yeah, you're, I'm fucking, I'm like, I'm, yeah, I'm all <laughs> in it, bro. I wouldn't be able to do this. Yeah, so let's go. And with that being said, this is episode number 77. Please make sure you follow my guy, Chris. Not, Not that, that Cheney, C H E N E Y. Follow my guy Lawrence, L Z D 325. Uh, sub podcast NYC at Gmail. And that's the Instagram handle. 
Uh, look, we got a phone number. If you are a fan of the podcast, you know where to find that. So you could text the podcast, uh, leave us a voicemail. We got a subreddit, r slash subpodcast. We have a Discord. Uh, if you want um, to get an invite, I'll leave it in the description. Uh, I think that's it. My motherfucking guy. Uh, good luck. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Peace, bitches. Peace, y'all.